Can you hear me? Yeah. Right, good evening. Um, I want to talk about artificial intelligence. Um, there's been a lot of talk about AI already today, and uh, I saw from the survey that one in six companies in the room use AI on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, while about 40% don't have a strategy but think they should have one. So quite a large discrepancy between the adoption of AI, uh, and that's what I want to uh, talk about today. Quite pragmatic. I'll talk about three things. Should we care about AI and invite an AI company to answer that question? There will be a bias in the answer. Um, what works, what doesn't work, we'll spend most of uh, our time there, and uh, what you can do to get most, the most value for your company. So, from my perspective, um, and, and, and this is shared you know, in, in the technical community in the States and so on, artificial intelligence is seen as the new electricity. And let that sink in for a bit. So the same way 100 years ago electricity transformed every sector, um, AI is transforming every sector today. And it takes a couple of years, it takes maybe a couple of decades for a new technology to permeate every sector, but it is happening. And while things like blockchain are indeed the future, AI isn't. AI is not the future, AI is today, AI is yesterday in many um, sectors, especially the ones with a strong online presence. Um, but in in food and, uh, fruit and veg, um, AI has been slow to catch up, but it is, it is catching up. So agriculture is now catching up. Um, you see more and more examples uh, of companies implementing AI, and the benefits are very, very clear. You can reduce waste, you can improve your sales, you know, both in terms of uh, uh, value and volume, optimize your cost and so on. And the barriers are really more about inertia than anything else. Right? So, what can, we, um, what can we say about AI that, is, that makes it pragmatic, that makes those of you who don't have a strategy start to make inroads in, in that direction? Now, the way I like to think of this is to compare narrow AI with the big blue floating head. And, and the big blue floating head, I'll introduce you um, um, to, to it now, is basically Hollywood's representation of AI, which skews what, what people think of AI. It's just ominous presence you know, omnipresent and all-powerful, this super being, usually with some um, weird intentions. That, that's just a fantasy. It doesn't exist, it may never exist, and there's no incentive for anyone to build it. What does exist and what works is something called narrow AI. Now, narrow AI, um, there's a recipe for it. It's really simple. It needs a specific task, it needs a way to measure performance, and it needs data to train on. That's all there is to it. Right? And before we go into the examples, I want to show you the technical slide. There's one technical slide in this whole presentation, and this is it. So an AI application would typically have, at its core, a machine learning solution, and that is a computer program that learns from examples. Around that, you wrap a layer of automation, and that feeds data into the machine and gets data out. And around that, you wrap an interface. The interface is with the users, with the ERP, with the BI, with the Internet of Things, the sensors, whatever you need. Right? That's it. So this is how an AI application looks. Now, let's get to some examples. The first one is, is not a commercial one, but I love this example. Um, so, and you'll see in Fruit Logistic are some amazing sorting solutions, but I, I picked this one, uh, which is a home-built sorting solution, because it helps me illustrate how AI works. So Makoto Koike is an engineer. His, um, his background is in uh, the auto industry. And his parents grow cucumbers in Japan. So what he's done is he's, he asked his mother to label 7,000 photos of cucumbers. And you see them uh, right there. So you see the top group is class A, you know, very long, long, medium, short, and so on. So you've got nine classes. Um, and then he used those 7,000 images to train a, a neural net. And that neural net. Uh, would recognize, would be able to classify a cucumber, right? Which is, you know, a, a relatively difficult task. I mean, it, it did uh, used to take his parents a lot of time to do this, um, and it's much, much easier to do that in uh, in a machine. And then around that uh, machine learning ap application, uh, he built some cameras on a conveyor belt and a, a little paddle that push every cucumber in the right box. This is a gorgeous homemade AI project. Uh, and this is a classification example. Right? Um, the next example I'll give you uh, is a regression example. So this 
The first one shows you in which category should I put this item based on examples. The next one, how much will I produce? How much will I be able to harvest tomorrow and the day after tomorrow and so on? So this is um, one of the kinds of projects we do. We've been doing AI in fruit and veg since 2013. And for, for something like this, we start off with uh, planting and production data, um, which we use as our examples. We add some external data feeds. Obviously, weather is, uh, is going to play a big part. We train the models. We have an initial running model. And then we uh, automate that with the data coming from the grower. If they have sensors, let's say for, for strawberries, they would have sensors in the tunnels. We plug into those. And then as the model um, uh, works over time, it gets better every, uh, every time there's a new uh, data iteration. So that's, um, that's a crop uh, forecasting that is a relatively, well, it's, it's not a simple process, but it's a relatively simple regression. You uh, estimate the quantity of one product. Uh, and then the next example is a sales forecast. Now, in sales, it's a bit more complex. It's a multivariate regression because what you have is you have several products that impact each other. So again, we start with some basic training data. You look at past sales and look at past promotions. Um, and then we uh, obviously need to have the same live data as the past training data. The external data feeds here are a bit more complex. So you have the holidays, the you know, school holidays and so on, uh, salary days and trade statistics and FX and all that. But it's essentially the same, just instead of forecasting one thing, you forecast multiple items at the time. And then we, we make it so that the user can, can go in and say, well, actually, that promotion has been postponed or, uh, and so on. Or the distribution has dropped, things like that. But that's how AI works, OK? So in order to, to get the most uh, out of AI for, for your company, my recommendation is start small. Identify something that you think will really benefit from AI. Don't put a lot of capital in it. Fill out these five points. What do you try to get out of it? What is it? What data do you have? And then with that project brief, give it a go. Right. That is my recommendation for way forward. So to recap, AI is the new electricity. That does require a little bit of change inside the company to take advantage of. Number two, narrow AI works really well. What you need to do, what you need for that is a task, a metric, and data. And finally, be pragmatic, start with a brief. Thank you.